Good evening, and uh, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Um, my name, as you'll see on the screen, is Les Harrow, one of the brand ambassadors for the Society. And if you don't know me, I'm based in Harrogate in North Yorkshire, equidistant between um, the venues in, in London and Edinburgh, which makes it a little bit more difficult for me to pop in at the, the weekends. Um, you may have watched Olaf uh, on here last night. He was doing a review uh, of three bottles, and again today with uh, another mid-month release, and these three bottles went live this afternoon. Um, I hope everyone's been having a, a good week so far this week. I've had an absolutely storming week, one of the best weeks of the year. The reason being, the three bottles I'm going to review tonight uh, landed uh, here on Monday, and I had the, the wonderful task on Monday evening of sampling all three, which are stunning drams. Uh, and then on Tuesday, um, Another six bottles arrived because I'm doing a, a members tasting here in Harrogate tomorrow night, first sort of live one, uh, so to speak, out of the virtual world uh, and into the real world. Um, so six bottles arrived on Tuesday, which I've been working my way through as well, <laughs> and they're all stunning as well. So my week so far has been absolutely excellent. So the three whiskies we're going to review tonight, it's a, it's, it's a bit of an island odyssey. Um, it's 51.7 distillery. Uh, 4.257, and I haven't seen this distillery for uh, some time, and 42.48. So we're heading to Northern Ireland, up to Orkney, and finishing off the west coast of Scotland on the island of Mull. Now, the theme for the August outturn for the Society uh, was um, flavours that were out of this world. And it was a bit of a, you'll, if you follow Society on social media, um, you'll know there's a little bit of a, a sci-fi theme going on this month as well. Um, well, the whiskies that I'm um, sampling tonight, certainly the first one, took me to heaven. So uh, it was certainly out of this world. Um, and the nice thing about these three whiskies, for myself reviewing them, was the variety of flavours. Because if you had just three bottles in your whisky cabinet, um, the variety that's available from these three was absolutely uh, fantastic. So without any further ado, I'm going to pour myself uh, another dram. But what I did the other night, um, because until these bottles were released today, um, I didn't have the, the panel's tasting notes available. So I always, anyway, try to do my own notes before looking at the society panel's tasting notes. So that doesn't influence what I think I'm getting in terms of aromas uh, and flavours. Um, so I've got the, the, when it went live this afternoon, I've printed them off and I'll be comparing my notes from the other night with the tasty notes, but also uh, to see if what I'm getting this evening is the same I got Monday evening, because you may be familiar, if you've done it yourself, you can have a whiskey in one night of the week, try it again later in the week, and you think, is this the same whiskey I'm having? Because your palate, the mood you're in, how you're feeling uh, can change um, your perception of, of that whiskey but um on to the first one so the first one is wonderful 51.17 i hope you can see that a spring in your step um, it's a 19 year old uh, distilled on the 16th of january 2001 and it's a second fill x bourbon barrel and the strength of this one was 54.6 what i did find surprising with uh, all the whiskies uh, that uh reviewed on Monday evening and sampled was a lot of people have obviously been tuning into so many different um, online whiskey tastings and forums etc recently and when you talk to some people listen to some people they tell you about nosing the whiskies and how to really stick your nose in and take a big sniff which is fine if the whiskey's standard 40, 43 percent, but when it's a single cast car strength whiskey, that's not quite so easy because you can anesthetize your nose very quickly uh, and not taste, uh, sorry, not um, smell anything for the rest of the evening. But what I found surprising with these three whiskies, even though they're at quite high strengths, that they were quite easy to really put your nose in and, and get some wonderful aromas. And this first one is just as I say, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. It's from the actual the Vaults collection. Um, you'll see from the, the slightly different logo. And the Vaults selection is something which the tasting panel think has been either an exceptional cask and um, something 
really good or they've rated it very, very highly indeed. And, and this one comes under that. It's called a spring in your step. Excuse me, just for looking down and keep referring to the, the notes here. And um, it's a sweet, fruity and mellow uh, flavour profile. And it definitely falls into that category as we go through it. So in terms of my tasting notes, um, the, the nose, as I said, is very, very easy, even at over 54% ABV, very easy to, to take. And wonderful perfumed aromas there. Nothing that, ah, good evening, Petra from County Donegal in, uh, in Ireland. You may be familiar with this distillery anyway. Um, very pleasant perfume nose. It moved quite quickly to estuary, fruity aromas there as well. Uh, but very, very pleasant, easy to, to take in. Um, tasting it neat. Quite easy to go down, although it's just a little bit of bite there. Um, and this reminded me, and unless you're of a certain age, you won't recall these, but as I was a kid growing up, we had things and unimaginable nowadays, but sweetie cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> Which, as I say, you wouldn't think uh, they would be allowed, well, you certainly wouldn't be allowed these things these days, but uh, they're all the rage as kids, and the, the flavour of this whiskey just reminded me of these sweetie cigarettes. Another sweet, I uh, obviously had a sweet tooth as a young child, was something called Odd Fellow Sweets, which I didn't think you could get these days, and actually Googled it the other night, and there are a couple of companies up in Scotland, Ross is one of them, who make Edinburgh Rock, uh, still do a version of these sweets, but that's what it reminded me of on, on the palate. It's, as I say, without water, it's still approachable. But I'm going to add a little bit of water to this, and if you have purchased a bottle of this uh, today and you're waiting for it arriving, uh, I can say that you do not need an awful lot of water with this one. Two or three drops is just enough to open it up um, and improve and enhance it to, uh, very much. The palate, as I say, without, uh, before you add water, it's got this sharp sweetness, but not in a, a bad way at all. Water, only a little bit water. And I found with this one, because normally when you add two or three drops of water to the whiskey, as you know, it helps open up the aromas, get more of a nose. I wouldn't say this one has opened up tremendously, but it just seemed to have more depth to the whiskey. But I stick my nose into it this time. Still intriguing, very gentle, uh, but more depth to the aromas. Very pleasant indeed. On the palate. Silky smooth, really, really, really nice whiskey. Um, it's smooth, but it's got a lot of character to it at the same time. So it's not um, one of these Sometimes you get a whiskey which you think smooth, gentle, but is still insipid and it doesn't excite me enough, but this has still got a lot of character to it. On the finish, um, beautiful, beautiful, very mellow. And the thing that struck me, must be because I like my food, um, was custard creams of all things. Uh, just as that goes over the, the throat and sort of trickles down down your tubes into your tummy, uh, it leaves this residue of creaminess. And it just reminded me of, of custard creams, uh, this one, but a really, really nice whiskey. Um, I regard would regard this one as a session dram. Um, when it's suitable at some point in the future where we can gather our friends and colleagues round to your house and, and have a few drams. This would be the type of one that I'd be quite happy, well, I don't know if I want to share with anybody else, it's so good. But take the cock off, pour a few drams, and you just sit back and have a pleasant evening. And it's one of these that you can just keep topping your glass up as the evening goes along. Such an easy drinking, but a lot of character to this uh, whiskey. In terms of the, the distillery, now, when I said Northern Ireland, um, there's probably a bit of a clue there, because um, there isn't an abundance of distilleries in Northern Ireland, and this is certainly the, probably the most uh, famous one. Um, it's in County Antrim, and it's located just a, a few miles from Port Rush, where the open wards, I think it was last year, if not last year, year before, I think it was last year, 
uh, goes way back to the 1700s, um, although they'll claim that they started in the 1600s, but uh, actually it was a license to produce whiskey in the area was provided in the 1600s. But it goes back a long, long way. And my first introduction to any whiskey from this distillery was uh, in a previous life. I worked for a building society, um, Bradford and Mingley. I can say that because they're out of business now, so it's not advertising. Uh, but our region also covered uh, Northern Ireland. And we had a couple of branches over there, Belfast, Newton Arts, and uh, I flew over a couple of times and to do branch visits. And the first time I went to Belfast, one of the guys in the, the branch, Terry, a real character, lovely little guy, he says, oh, you'll be going out for a few drinks tonight. You'll be having a black bush. And I really didn't know what he was talking about. And this was, you know, about 25 years ago before I really started to get heavily involved and interested in whiskey. And I'm thinking, the black bush, what's he talking? Didn't want to show my ignorance. And somebody else in the branch said, oh, that's, that's a you know, really good whiskey, the bush mills, the black bush. You've got to try it. Uh, and I was in my hotel that night, did try it, and found it a very, very pleasant uh, blend indeed. Um, so... The distillery, as I say, you've probably worked it out by now. Uh, I'll try and avoid saying the name, but I've given you enough clues. Um, this is the second time I've had spirit from this distillery through the society. The last one was a couple of years ago. I did a tasting up in Newcastle, and we had another uh, bottle from uh, this distillery. My experience so far from what the society has bottled has been absolutely stunning, uh, fantastic whiskey. Uh, this one, as I say, is uh, distillery 51, uh, but it's cask 17. So it's not one of these that comes along on a regular basis. Um, but if you get the opportunity to try this in any of the members' rooms, please do. Um, Stephen, hello, Stephen from York. I was trying a smokehead rum rebel on my glass tonight. Very interesting. Um, and Ian Brown, I'm hoping, hoping in with a sweet Sprite 8819. Delighted to hear what everyone's drinking tonight, so keep it coming. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 the two opportunities I've had to sample um, society bottles from this distillery have been absolutely a great experience myself. In terms of the distillery, um, I know we talk about it because it is so important uh, the cast type that we use and the single cask and how it's unique and every bottle we do is, is different. Um, but the ambassador, myself and my fellow ambassadors, have been doing a lot of work recently uh, during lockdown uh, with uh, Zoom sessions uh, two or three times a week, um, enhancing our understanding and knowledge. We have been spending a bit more time looking at well, where do the flavours start to be created in distilleries? Because uh, as I say, we do focus on the cask and to be fair, that's where the, the, the bulk of the, the flavour comes from. Uh, but before it even gets into the cask, there are certain things that start to differentiate the spirit from each distillery. Now, with this one, as you know, Ireland, and, but it's not, everybody thinks all Irish whiskey is triple distilled. Um, it isn't. Um, but the, in the main, a, a lot of them do triple distill the, the whiskey. So it does make it a, a lighter style uh, spirit and it's coming through in this one, certainly. Uh, and I have found that uh, Irish whiskey can be a good starting point for those who are brand new to whiskey. Uh, they might find uh, a single malt from Scotland. We would love it because it's got bags of characters, but it might be a bit too intimidating. So um, something like this would be very, very Pleasant, I would anticipate, for uh, someone starting out on the, the whiskey journey. But a very, very nice one indeed. The distillery itself is going through, um, or has done in the last uh, year or two, a bit of expansion. In fact, the owners have spent something in the region of £30 million uh, increasing the capacity and adding new warehousing, etc. And the capacity, I don't know if it's up there yet, but um, it was targeted to go up to 9 million litres per annum. So this is a big player uh, in terms of distillery size, but a beautiful whiskey and a really nice one to start uh, the evening. So I'd say if you do get the opportunity um, of sampling this, if you're at uh, any of the members' rooms, please do. You will not be disappointed. Mm, that custard cream again. So the second one, this one really, really surprised me. And uh, this is a uh, cask 4.257. It's 
15 year old going the extra miles. And excuse me while I just rearrange my paperwork there to get to the, the right bit. Um, this one is from um, the Orkney Isles. And again, <laughs> there's only two distilleries there. Um, you've got a 50% chance of getting picking the right one. Uh, this spent 13 years in the ex bourbon cask and the last two years in the first full ex Pedro Jimenez hogshead. And these two years has really, really shaped this dram something incredibly well. And on Monday night when I was uh, sampling uh, these whiskies, uh, I was messaging with my colleague who's holding the fort for the IT site tonight, uh, Andrew Park. A lot of you may already know Andrew from doing tastings and um, he works behind the scenes a lot at the vaults uh, supporting us. Um, and he was very keen. I was, as I say, we're messing each other back and forward and I was sending him pictures of the bottles and what have you. And he said, I'm really keen to, to know your thoughts on number four, uh, which is this one. And as I went through it, I was messaging him saying, if I didn't know which distillery this was, I would never, ever, ever guess it. Um, Stephen, um, tastings in York, we are working on tastings at the moment. Um, things are going very, very slowly, but we would hope to be there before the end of the year. Um, keep your eyes posted and uh, we'll let you know when we, we know we're going to York. Somebody's on a 6360. Martin, I hope you're enjoying it. Matthew, I've not have yet had the opportunity to try SMWS. I have to order as I don't think they're readily available here in Los Angeles. Um, I presume you're a member. If you are, yeah, you can go on to the website of the American branch um, and join. Um, if you're not a member, you can join uh, online and you can get bottles shipped directly from uh, the main society uh, branch, which is based in New York. So look that out, smws.com, and on there, you'll find international branches uh, if you need any help there. Uh, Stephen, I just caught your last one. I don't know if it was, could you hold the bottle up? I'm not sure, but if you're looking to get more details, it is there, going the extra miles. Um, the title of this one in the taste notes, got to recommend, uh, commend, sorry, the panel for this one, because it's a, a take on the the pilgrimage, uh, paying homage to the famous pilgrimage, Camino de Santiago, and going the extra mile, or S in brackets, is about the, the long walk, and absolutely fantastic, and the tasty notes refer to the Cathedral of Santiago. Uh, but back to the whiskey, the, this one, as I say, only two years in a, a Pedro Jimenez. And if anybody's not sure what Pedro Jimenez is, PX as it's known in the, the whiskey industry, um, it's a very, very sweet dessert sherry uh, from Spain, where they use grapes of the same name, uh, and they pick them when they're very, very ripe and leave them to dry in the sun, which accentuates the, the sweetness of the, uh, the grape for the sherry. Uh, and it's that and all of are the two more popular finishes you'll find for, for whiskey. But this one, uh, very dark in colour. As I say, I would never, ever have guessed because I started to do my notes, scribble some notes down before the samples even arrived so I could get ahead of the game. Just a few notes about the distillery to give you information, particularly any relating to anything which um, impacts in the production side to the eventual flavour of the whiskey and the style of the whiskey. So I did a whole lot about the peat in Orkney and how it's different and there's no trees and all the rest. Sample this and I'm thinking there's no smoke in this. And it's real, as I say, if I didn't know which distillery it was, I would never in a month of Sundays guess which one it was, distillery number four. But a real heavyweight in the nose, this one. Compared to the first one, the first one was nice, gentle, floral. This one just really hits you. Wonderful. There was quite a density about it, and uh, I was personally getting sort of whiny, fainty, woody aromas coming through. Um, they were quite balanced, but at the same time, they seemed to be fighting for attention in there. Just, just wonderful on the nose there. And going back to, well, I haven't got time tonight, but Monday night, I, I did my usual nosing tasting, had a bit of water, nose taste, leave the whiskey, go back, try it 10, 15 minutes later. Uh, which I tend to do with all whiskies uh, when I'm sampling for the 
very first time. And this one, once I'd left it for a little while without adding the water, I was starting to get rum and raisins coming through there as well. On the palate, just good evening, Switzerland. Good evening, Marcus from Switzerland. You're enjoying a, a 66, which is possibly, with, they do do some unpeated versions, but 66 are normally a, a peated style. So I hope you're enjoying that one. Uh, but this one, just as I say, the, the, the palate was just, well, wow, it's a mouth filler as well. And you, you won't see it online, certainly on the camera, but um, the legs in this one are just sensational because they're, it's slow coming down, trickling down. The other thing surprised me, and it's maybe my palate these days, um, but I didn't think this one needed a great deal of water either. So just three or four drops there. Um, this one is 56.6% uh, alcohol by volume. And I was getting all the real characteristics of um, this style of whiskey. Um, rich, deep, dried fruits, absolutely fantastic. And I went to my cabinet the other night and I'll, I won't advertise where I got it, uh, but most supermarkets will get this. Sorry, wrong way around. My bottle of Pedro Jimenez and there was sampling the whiskey, taking a little sip of the Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez itself on its own, very, very sweet, very intense. But going back to the whiskey, you could certainly see where the character was coming through from the influence that had in the, the, the cask. But a real bruiser mouthful of this one. So let's add another couple of drinks of water just in case. And on the nose now, I'm starting to get a bit of treacle and it's a little bit sweeter in the nose as well. But still very deep, rich. Good evening, Ian. Thanks for joining us. And Benny, good to see you this evening. Thanks for uh, logging in. Just realised I was talking into the glass there. Wow, this one, <laughs> this is the water just rings out all the flavours in this one. Absolutely fantastic. Took me back um, to two or three years ago because our, our brains are wonderful things when you're enjoying a whiskey, your memory takes you back to places, incidents, things you've experienced, and all of a sudden this wonderful golden liquid uh, does wonderful things with your mind. And it took me back to um, a visit to St. Lucia two or three years ago. We're on a cruise ship and we're a day in St. Lucia. And I'll probably get this wrong, but... Um, we had some East, I think it was Eastern Caribbean dollars. We, we took US dollars. We realized once we'd visited all the islands, everybody wants US dollars. They don't want the Caribbean ones. But we had some and not every place took them. So just as we're heading back into the, 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 the port to get the ship, we bought a bottle in a, sh a shop of Chairman's Reserve uh, rum from St. Lucia. And through this, going through the shop, we had a few notes left. And we thought, well, what can we spend it on? And there was this lovely um, St. Lucia Caribbean uh, cake laced with rum. And when I sampled this the other night, this took me straight back to the rum cake and the natural bowl of uh, Chairman's Reserve St. Lucia rum as well. Just beautiful. So much character and depth to this one. And it really just it sticks in your mouth and sticks in your throat. And oh, just, just wonderful. If you had a sore throat or a cough or something, this would be fantastic for that. So with this one, if anybody who likes dark rum would really appreciate this one. Um, if you enjoy the flavour profile, um, then again, you would really like this one. Um, but if you want, if you're familiar with distillery number four and you like distillery number four, but wanted to try something completely different from that distillery, then this would be a good option to you. And it's called, as I say, going the, the extra miles. Oh, just fan dabby dozy. Now I'm just going to cleanse my palate after that one because it does stay with you for a while. 
which isn't a bad thing because it's a fantastic uh, taste, that one. Bishop Van Boy, best society drama I ever had was a 4.151. Can't remember that one. Ah, good evening, David. Thank you very much for joining us tonight up in Bishop Auckland. I'll put the um, PX sherry away as well in case uh, we do any cooking later on. And um, we'll go on to the next drama. Just take another one. Derek, good evening, sir. Derek's from Harrogate, local guy. I'm going to say local guy. He's an American. Uh, and him and his friends are starting up um, making good progress with your new distillery uh, back in the States. So, yes, we need to meet up soon and just uh, find out. Follow them on Facebook. And who knows, Derek, perhaps one day the society will be bottling some of your uh, fine whiskey in years to come because I know when you get it up and running, it'll be a, a fabulous place because uh, I know you like your, your your whiskey and I know the style you like as well. And this one, um, I'm sure, would suit you as well because I know which distillery is your favourite distillery in Scotland. But on to the third one, cask 42.48. Now, this time we're going over to, and this isn't rigged, uh, it was only when I was setting up tonight, got the table and setting up the, the laptop with the camera that I realised the picture behind me is actually the town where this distillery is located. And again, you don't, it's not a lot of detective work with this one, Isle of Arden. Um, the distillery there um, makes two types of whiskey. There are two styles of whiskey rather, not two types, two styles. They do an unpeated version and the brand name is taken from the name of the distillery, which is the same name as the colourful town, which is made famous by the children's TV show, Ballymore. Um, and the other style is the Peter style. This is the Peter style. And the brand name for that one, which I'm not going to give you, um, in Gaelic means safe haven. Um, and in the way it's pronounced, it's, well, it is an unpronounceable name because the way it's written, we think that's the way it's pronounced, but it actually isn't, and there's so many variations of it. But, um, so it's quite an interesting quiz question to, to, to write that and ask somebody to, to actually pronounce it. Quite a good one. So this one, uh, as I say, Odin and Zeus. So this is the peaty flavour profile. Um, and this one is... On the nose, it's actually very, very gentle. 4.249, Mermaid's Marmalade was excellent, so uh, thank you for that. Um, so a lot of fans of distillery number four out there is, uh, this evening. Uh, but this one, 42, on the nose, this is actually quite, quite a pleasant and easy nose. It doesn't overpower you straight away, but when you add the water, as I discovered, Two, three drops of water there. All of a sudden, this it does transform into a different style of, of whiskey. It really brings out the smokiness in this one. But it's not an overpowering smokiness. And when I was thinking of this one, I thought, yeah, who would this suit? And um, if you want a change from an Isla dram, this would be quite suitable as well. But it might also be for people who struggle with the peaty style of whiskies. Um, it's got a nice whiff of smoke to it, a nice bit of peat in there. Um, but it's not too overpowering. And it's a lovely sweetness. And I find, personally, for my palate, uh, the sweeter this, the, the peaty style of whisky, uh, the more pleasing and easy that is for me to, to consume and appreciate um, but I'm just looking at the, the tasty notes for the society. When I looked at this on Monday, um, as I say, I scribbled my notes for, for all three whiskies, and then I did secretly try them all again before we went on air tonight. And I like doing that because sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, you can get something different from the whiskey. And the other night when I put it down, um, lovely balance to it, but I put bandages and um, germline. But tonight, I just wasn't getting that at all. So I thought, well, what if the panel put down for the tasting notes? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not getting what I thought I was getting on Monday night. Didn't get this, but wonderful the explanation. It says a petrol explosion in the middle of a peat bog. Now, I've never been in a peat bog where there's been a petrol explosion, but 
if you can fix that in your mind, that may, might give you an idea of, of what's in this class. So you're getting the peat, you're getting the smoke, there's quite an earthy uh, peatiness, smokiness, which is different from the, the, the style you, you would get from an Isla whiskey. So as I say, if you're looking for something in that um, flavour profile, but a little bit different um, from an Isla one, this is a, a, a nice one to try. And as I say, it's nice and sweet, very pleasant. The smoke does build. And again, after about 10, 15 minutes with this one in the glass, it really starts to, to, to come out. But easy drinking again. This one is 62.1% alcohol by volume, 18 year old from a refill bourbon hogshead. So even at 62.1, you'd expect it to be quite lively, powerful, but reasonably gentle, but again, enough peat and smoke there to satisfy any peat head out there. So again, if you're in any of the venues and you have the opportunity of trying this one, I would certainly uh, give it a go. So that's the three whiskies we've, we've sampled tonight. And uh, thanks for the comments that have come up and sharing with me what um, whiskies you're having tonight or otherwise. Um, I said right at the beginning of the evening, these three whiskies would be, if you could only buy three whiskies a year to put in your cabinet, you wanted a variety, then these three certainly offer that. You've got the light, lovely, gentle one from Northern Ireland. You've got the Orkney one, which is a real humdinger, different from what I would expect from that distillery. The smokiness on it was just very faint and at the very back on the, the finish. Uh, and then this one from the Isle of, uh, of Mull. And again, it's uh, the story 42.48. So again, it's not one which comes along fairly frequently. The distillery itself, some of you may know, it's been was closed for almost two years, partially closed while they were doing some improvements. A very, very small distillery. Uh, it's had a checkered uh, history, a number of closures. It's been uh, used as a power station for storing cheese, a canteen in its time. It's been open, closed. Uh, but since the, the 80s, when Bon Stewart bought it over, um, it's chugged along quite merrily. Uh, but they've changed the range recently, the packaging, and everything about it seems to be improving because this particular um, style of whiskey from this distillery, over a number of years, I've sampled it and never really cottoned on to. I thought, well, it's all right, but nothing special. But again, I have had two or three through the society. They don't come along frequently, but the ones I've had in the last three or four years, the two or three have have always been very, very pleasant. So they're, they're, they're certainly doing something uh, right these days. Um, so that's it for the evening. And thank you very much for tuning in, for those who have taken the time. Um, just to let you know that uh, obviously there's other flavour profiles available on the website should you be looking to uh, purchase a bottle. Um, for those of you who are local to Harrogate, we are out and about. Tomorrow night is our first venture, I believe. I think it's the first one in the UK where we've done all the online tastings due to lockdown. The members' rooms are back open again at the moment and doing socially distanced tasting. But we're dipping a toe in the water tomorrow night and going back out to the members. So I know many of you, and I've been receiving emails from members in Manchester, Liverpool, saying, when are you coming? And Steve from York asking dinner. We, are, we will hopefully be coming to a town near you between now and the end of the year. Uh, but you can understand, but we're, we're just dipping our toes in the water and taking things very, very slowly and cautiously. Um, we're vetting all the venues to make sure that, and um, we're reducing the numbers as well to make sure that if you come along to one of our tastings, you feel safe and it's a comfortable environment. Um, so perhaps we'll see some of you uh, between now and the end of the year. Um, so again, thank you very much for viewing and staying safe. Uh, and all I can say is uh, happy dramming. Continue with the dramming. And thank you very much. And good evening. <laughs>